So today we're going to be going over the basics of ceilings and roofs, um, when to use each of them, um, and then also just kind of getting into how the how each of the tools works. Um, so we're going to start with roofs. They're the slightly more complicated um, tool, but for the most part, they they work similarly. Um, before we jump into that, uh, I will say which one you pick does matter. Um, let's say we've got a I've got a couple walls here um, <coughs> that we'll be using as our as our kind of template to create the roofs and ceilings. Um, if you have let's say on the top floor of your your building, um, you're generating a roof uh, for that top floor, but then you also have a ceiling. Um, if you have a flat ceiling um, and a flat roof, you need to kind of determine um, what you're going to be using the model for. And what I mean by that is uh, ceilings, many light families can only be placed into ceilings. They cannot be placed into roofs. So a lot of people use roofs in place of ceilings because they'll build in that, uh, that lower... Uh, ceiling finish layer into the roof system itself but then they go to put a light in it and they can't so then they have to go back and kind of reconfigure everything so what I tend to recommend is using a ceiling as a, just like a half inch drywall ceiling that runs runs through the entire thing leaving a cavity between that drywall ceiling and then whatever your roof uh, structure or just kind of uh, plenum there for HVAC and stuff, uh, leaving that open and then building your roof system on top of that. Um, that way that leaves a cavity between your roof that you've modeled and your ceiling that you've modeled for those recessed lights to kind of sit up in that empty space. Um, as we get into things a little bit further on, I'll, I'll kind of show what I mean by that, but I just wanted to touch on that. Um, real quick because which one you use does make a difference in certain situations. So if we're going to create a roof we're going to come up here and if we click this little drop down we'll see that there are a bunch of different op options of how you can create a roof and under the roof tool are also the tools for soffit, fascia, and gutter. Um, I might not make a video specifically about those but in the final two videos where we get into building the entire exterior of a of a building and then building an entire interior of a building, I'll touch on those just a little bit. Um, so the main, the main tool that you're going to use is this roof by footprint. Um, roof by extrusion is um, similar to using like an extrude tool from the model in place families. Uh, you basically sketch a line and then it automatically extrudes that line back um, a, whatever a set distance that you determine. Um, so like you can see from the picture, it's great for kind of curves and different shaped roofs. Uh, but it does not allow for a ton of flexibility there. Roof by face, if you have kind of a crazy form, um, just like the picture shows, you click that face and it'll create uh, the roof on that face. So if you have a massing uh, that you want to stick a roof on, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but we're going to mostly focus on this roof by footprint tool. So if I click on that, It'll, op it'll open up this dialog box and it says, I'm creating, I'm on level one here, and it says you you create a roof on the lowest level, do you want to move it to level two? And I'll say yes. And when I do that, basically what it's telling me is I'm going to create the roof on level two, but I'm going to keep you on level one. So I can still create this roof on level one using my walls as kind of a, a template here, um, and then go from there. So... I have this default pick walls um, option selected first and I have an overhang option here. So I could say okay I want a two foot overhang on this and if I hover over a wall you'll see that the dotted line extends two feet out so that'll be the limit of my roof. Now I can go around and click all of these in or if I know I just want to encompass the entire thing I can hit tab and it will encompass the entire thing in one click. So now that this is all of these lines are created, you'll see all of these carrots. All of these carrots signify that that line is what Revit calls defining a slope. And 
what defining the slope means is that this line it's going to slope into the roof so this this is defining a plane that is then moving this direction this one's defining a plane that's moving that direction this one's defining one that way and all the way around so right now we have an entirely hip roof um, we don't have any gables or anything like that if we wanted to create a gable we would have to eliminate that defined slope so that this isn't creating a plane it would just be a connection point between these two sloping pieces so if I hit the check mark right now and I'm gonna say sure all that's doing is saying do you want these walls to extend up and connect with the roof sure that's fine so like I said we have an entirely hip roof here um, it kind of resolves all these all these little um, weird conditions so right now this is basically telling me I probably want to kind of create some maybe pull this in just a little bit so that 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 hip um, moves in just a slight amount so that I don't have this weird little nub sticking up there but um, not too worried about that right now so now that we've got this hip let's say we wanted to create a gable along that one face so if I go back into my sketch and hit edit footprint I'm gonna select this line and when I select this line some information pops up it shows me my overhangs two feet um, also shows me that my pitch is 912 so I've got a pretty steep pitch for all of these um, and if I actually tab and select all of the lines at one time over here in the properties window I can see that all of those are 912 let's say I drop those down to like a 412 something like that <coughs> but then I can grab this line and up here right next to overhang is define slope and I can turn that off as soon as I turn that off and hit my check mark and go back to my 3d view now you can see I have a gable over that edge because that line no longer defines a slope it's going to use the sloping planes around it to determine what that ends up looking like so when you create gables and things like that you can do all that this way um, you can also go in and let's say this section over here steps down so maybe my eave is slightly different over here um, you can you can change eave heights for uh, for all these different um, different kind of levels up here is a tool called align eaves so if for whatever reason all of this if it things didn't work out real well and all of a sudden I've got to slope down to get to this point I could hit align eaves and it would show that things aren't working out real well but um, currently because this is a real simple model it says all eaves are already aligned so I don't have any issues um, for it to automatically kind of resolve for me so um, when you get into more complex roofs uh, where things are stepping up and down things are kind of intersecting in different ways and uh, and you know you you've just got more intricacy to the roof a lot of times this roof by footprint will not work for the entire model you won't be able to just go around the entire thing and say okay good hit the check mark everything's great um, you might have to piece it together so you might do a piece over here and then a piece over here and then fill in in between um, I have done entire roofs where I make this will say I make this piece here um, first and I'll actually determine okay that is going to be and I'll actually turn define slope off there because I just want to create this face of the roof and I'll end up with let me get these walls out of the way I'll end up with just that face and then I can kind of go around and piece together the rest of this roof one surface at a time um, if you have a real intricate roof sometimes that's actually not a bad way to go because it as you go along you can resolve issues you can also, you have a little bit more flexibility in how the, all of this stuff kind of works together so <clears throat> that's kind of the, the basics of the the footprint roof we'll get into the properties and all of that sort of stuff in episode two of roofs and ceilings um, but now getting into the ceiling uh, tool it works very similar to the roof tool so I'll click this it shows me what kind of roof system I've got here I've got a 2x4 acoustic uh, tile ceiling system right now 
uh, I can do an automatic ceiling. So as long as my walls extend up beyond what my ceiling height is here. So right now my ceiling height is set at 8 foot. These walls are going up to 10 foot. I can use an automatic ceiling and I could just click in here <coughs> and it would create a ceiling that runs around, runs over the entire, uh, entire space. Or I can come in, say sketch ceiling. I'm actually going to do a vaulted ceiling in this middle space and then two flat ceilings on the side. So I'm going to do sketch ceiling and then come in and draw these in. Um, so I'll draw one side and then draw the other here. So similar to the uh, to the um, roof tool, we can define slope on this. So I can check that, that define slope on and it'll tell me what the, the slope is there. Um, I will say the unfortunate part about this, and I'm not sure why Revit hasn't adapted to suit this uh, need, um, you can only define one slope on a ceiling. That being said, um, so if I wanted to vault, vault this space, I'm going to have to create kind of two different planes there. So let's say I, I'm going to turn that off because I'm going to make that my, my one, and then I'm just going to mirror that over. So now I have my two flat ceilings at eight foot there. Now if I decide, okay, sketch ceiling, and I'm going to draw this entire piece here and I'm going to define slope on both of those and I want the slope to be say a 312 on both sides. Hit the green check mark and it says there's m more than one slope is defined. I'm not allowed to do this. It really kind of kind of sucks that they won't allow you to simply cr create a very simple vault this way, especially when obviously the, they have the ability to do that because they've already displayed it in the roof tool. Um, but for whatever reason with ceilings, they will not let you do more than one slope at a time. So if I want this to vault and peak in the middle, I actually have to create this in two separate ways and actually come in and create the center line and do a vault that way and then mirror it across to get the vault in the middle. <coughs> so if you have compound vaulting ceilings, it can get real complicated, especially intersecting um, ones with slightly different heights or slightly different pitches. Um, all that stuff can get a little bit more complicated and it would be really helpful if they could incorporate the same tools that you have in the roof tool into the ceiling tool. Um, but like I said, building this as a ceiling now I can insert lights into it um, for rendering purposes or even just doing a lighting plan. So um, that's kind of the basics of using the ceiling and the roof tools.